So we did Good Morning Mug Club. You can go watch that full show from this morning, but now you get the full uh, evening show. This is available for everyone who's a member of Mug Club, of course, behind the paywall at Blaze TV. Every week for the month of April, or I guess really uh, March 30th through May 1st, you get all of it because we wanted to give back to you. We know that you're isolated, getting a little bit stir crazy. So the hashtag is Mug Club Quarantine and... In order to uh, continue staying afloat and serving during this time, if you enter in the promo code at louderwithcredit.com slash mug club, you uh, enter in the promo code quarantine, get $30 off. Of course, for the schedule, evening and morning shows that are available here on YouTube and Blaze, go to louderwithcredit.com slash schedule. Subscribe to Crowder Bits, uh, iTunes, podcasts, all that. This is going to be an installment of Life Advice. Enjoy the show. Enjoy the show. That's called the peck deck dance because uh, we're, we're going to uh, get to life advice in a little bit. Johnny Boy, the guy who works with it, he used to go in high school and s- put all of the weight on the peck deck to really? show how strong he was really? show until off. he tore his peck because uh. it was very ill-advised Ooh. to use an isolation Ow. machine for maximal strength. Ugh. He still has breast tissue Ugh. from it. Yeah, just on the one side. Just, wow. Hang it. So in other words, understand. this is really more of a PSA. <laughs> Don't do this with a lot of weight. Uh, <laughs> we're going to get to your that letters, either. life yeah, advice, life advice at ladderwithcredit.com. This, yeah. this is a continuation, of course, of yeah. Mug Club Quarantine. Uh, yeah. Shows oh everywhere. You can go to ladderwithcredit.com slash schedule. Promo code quarantine. You get $30 off. How are you, Gerald Morgan Jr.? I'm doing well. Yeah? Are, are you doing well? Now I am. That's right. You weren't here this morning. That's true. Yeah. And I paid the price, my friend. You did pay the price. <laughs> Why <laughs> weren't you here? I paid the price. I wasn't invited. Really? No. You mm-hmm. told us you were going to be very busy because you were moving into a new house. Well, that that part's true. You're going to be a father. You know, every other excuse yeah. in the book. I mean, the yeah. business have is to wash than your ever. hair. Quarantine. You Stuff know. like that. <laughs> <laughs> Lame he stuff. Wash his hair. All these things. He follows the Lena Dunham school of thought. Never washes it. Okay. Mm. Uh, before we move on, do yeah. uh, you have anything else? Anything else we want to get to? No. Tomorrow. No. Tomorrow we have a razor fist in the show. By the yeah. way. Hold on. Oh right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh wait. I was talking. And I drank water. It went down the wrong pipe. Wait. Went down the wrong pipe. BS. I feel like every time someone coughs, isolate We him. feel like Glenn Close in Hook. <laughs> exactly. Like, Which one of you doubted me? <laughs> the boo box. No! 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 <laughs> that was Glenn Close, did, by the way. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. That, that was Glenn Close. Uh-uh. She yeah. was dating. Uh, a lot of people didn't realize that. Go back and watch that in Hook. It's Glenn Close with a beard. Yeah. Wow. No. Today, that would be anti trans. You couldn't do that. Ooh, that's true. <laughs> so I know that you are all very lonely. Uh, I get that you guys are a little stir crazy. So little, are we. Right. And uh, so we decided to give you more content than ever. Just please do consider signing up at the, yeah. uh, the ripe price of, I think it's like, 12 cents a day when you add it up with the $69 a year promo code just right. because oh, we're not monetized a, on the YouTube. <laughs> yeah. uh, quarter Black Air is going to have to take uh, 77 cents on the dollar, but he's a minority, so we'll take it oh, that's lying okay. down. I want my reparations. My question, so here's my question of the day. We're going to move on and talk about the whole YouTube landscape and network television landscape. Um, the coronavirus, it's essentially forced all late night hosts now to become YouTubers. So today yeah. in 2020, thanks to Corona, we are all YouTubers. How do you think these hosts stack up? Or you know what? I know you're just going to say they suck. So I need a more pointed question. Specifically, which host do you think stacks up the best without a massive staff and audience laughter cues? Colbert, Camel, Noah, B. B. Who do you think <laughs> is doing hard to get out. the best <laughs> job? Blah. Silver lining here. Silver lining. Yes. Uh, obviously, we're not, uh, we're not happy about the coronavirus. No, no one here not. is. We're not saying that. The not. silver lining is that it has exposed late night hosts and yeah. wannabe late night hosts on CNN, on the most trusted name in news. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> just for the, t- I wouldn't say talentless, but the lazy right. hacks. Yeah that they are. And that's why we're trying to do things a little bit differently Differently yeah, here. We yeah. see that all of these folks who have all of the staff, all of this budget, they're just broadcasting from their bathtub now. They're just broadcasting from home. And we decided, you know what? We can take an acceptable risk. We can come in here. We can quarantine in the office. We can quarantine at home. 
and try to make sure that you aren't just left out in the cold because Colbert can't find it within him as he shuffles past the 15 million annual salary <laughs> to find a microphone that he could use to broadcast. They basically have no. a vacation. Yeah. No, absolutely not. So uh, let's go right now to see, in case you don't believe me, just how lazy late night has become. To help prevent the spread of COVID-19, I'm now shooting the show with a safe, minimal crew of my husband and the creatures of the forest. Oh, who's this? Hello, everyone, and welcome wow. to Late Night from... It's on NBC. My hallway. Um, National welcome television. to The Tonight Show. I'm so excited to be doing He's the show He's not supposed to go to a room. kindergarten. I mean, living room. <laughs> Hi. He's the cubby keeper. Welcome he has to... to my bathroom. I'm joke. your host, Stephen Colbert. Ugh. You're watching a very what? special social distancing edition of The Late Show, or as I now call it, The Lather Show with Scrub and Colbert. So I'm doing the show from my house wow. in New York, and this is how crazy New York traffic is. I'm doing the show from my living room, and I was still 20 minutes late getting in. I'm a so hallucination. Like, I love the camera guys. you <laughs> isolating yourself. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> hey, man. Don't you ever let me catch you prescribing shit in my ward, cuz. Never funny accidentally. Now let me get that oh. Never stumbled <laughs> across wow. funny, Trevor Noah. My first guest tonight, as you can see, is Mr. Bubble. Followed by a musical performance by the legendary duo Head and Shoulders. Thanks, guys. I don't like it. I don't want oh, it. Shut it off. Oh and here's God. something so with bad. Trevor Noah. A lot of people don't realize this. People who haven't performed. We've had this struggle quite a bit when people yeah, are true, taking yeah. part in sketches here because a lot of people here aren't actors and we're kind of fitting them in. That, that would be me. If they've performed in rooms, for example, or in a green screen room that's supposed to take place outside mm -hmm. yeah. where people mm -hmm. will sort of talk like this. And I go, no, no, listen. People don't see you in a studio in a green screen room. They're going to see you outside in the forest or they're going to see you in a crowded mall. That's what we're doing with the green screen. So you need to project. Right. You need to project the kind of volume and the kind of intensity that your audience is expecting given that scenario because a lot of people get in and they start talking like this. That's what yeah. Trevor Noah is doing. Yeah. He's doing his show as though his wife is mad in the next room. I don't know if he's married. His boyfriend's <laughs> mad in the next room. <laughs> yeah. If he catches it's 2020. him. It's just when you take away the hype, the hundreds of employees, writers, producers, they don't have, they've got nothing. They can't do it. For a reference point, by the way, while we're talking about this, a single episode of Trevor Noah's show has 21 writers, 14 producers, Whoa. cast members, technical crew, all that. When you look at the entire staff of a show like Colbert's, you're talking about hot, over 100 people. That's and the budget insane. these shows have, tens of millions of dollars. Wow. Tonight's show alone is $75 million. $75 million. Wow. You couldn't find a camera guy who had more than an iPhone and, and laughs like Jimmy Fallon right. behind the camera. It's terrible when it's in front of the camera, but behind right. the camera when it's... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Still late? <laughs> no! <laughs> Wait. Shut up! <laughs> Stop. And here's something, too. It's not like this should have caught them off guard, right? I mean, they, they knew that something like this was coming with the coronavirus out there, and right. they didn't have a technical team that said, hey, give us, give us half a day, we'll set your house up. They do not respect the audience. This is the issue. I don't think they respect the audience. You, these hosts oh, make millions. Okay. Some of them make over $10 million a year. That's important to note. They could forego wow. half of that salary yeah. to have someone set up a, re a remote studio, by the way. This, everything here, every, this entire office, the people out there in the edit bay, this entire studio, our monthly, we could do all of that for a fraction of their salary. And it would be much better quality right now. Yes. Yeah. Wait, Especially ours or theirs? Ours. Ours could always ours be better. Yes, yeah. Yeah. always better. I'm very confused now as to what we're talking about. It was related to, but the point is, yeah. Trevor Noah yeah. wouldn't know funny if it swam up yeah. and bit him on the ass in Cape Town. He couldn't <laughs> be funny if he tried. I think Colbert has been funny. Down. I yeah. think Jimmy Kimmel can be funny. Yeah. But it is remarkable to me, and I understand this idea of social distancing, but why can they not set up a home studio or at least just get a mic? A mic. Yeah. Get a Yeti <laughs> mic, Seth Meyers. Yeah, well, the, close, yeah, the closest thing we have in late night is like Hurricane Sandy that pushed push through and, and they recorded to basically empty audiences for a yeah, couple of right. nights. I think Jimmy right. Fallon did, uh, Dave Letterman did. Dave Letterman did a show that was basically much more just sort of interactive between him and Paul, basically making fun of the fact that there was no audience right. there. It was it was funny that the jokes fell flat, and he was like, basically, it's like, you know, shame there aren't 500 people here to listen to this uh, quality television. Exactly. Right, that, that's the way to do it, but they're they're hyping it up and acting as right. if yeah. right. there's this huge audience. You're or not this, addressing yeah. right. the elephant in the room, yes. which is, an, <laughs> right. it's an elephant with a sign on it that says, you show sucks. It's, 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 it's an elephant shot. walking yeah. by with Looks a sign you. behind yeah. Colbert that says, watch Tiger King. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Turn this off. Oh, and here's an important note, too, because 
I'm kind of joking about it, but we're all YouTubers. Mm -hmm. They don't stack up well. They're not doing well. Their views yeah. aren't good. When you remove the paid views, it's even less. When you remove the when you remove the algorithms which favor them because they're right. advertiser friendly, yeah. it's even less. See, they, one thing we also know about Trevor Noah. Horrible, horrible design, horrible decor. That's very what is bad. that? Is it is it modern? Is it contemporary? Yeah. I don't know. But he has a pube stash. So the, <laughs> I guess he's not gay. I don't. I have no idea. Oh, you know what? How does right. that work? That's right. Yeah. He could just be the man, and he could be the man in the couple. He could just be gay. Uh, not, not all gay. Why are you yeah. so prejudiced? Not all gays That's are good positive. at design. That's a positive. That's like thing. assuming <laughs> that an uncharacteristically <laughs> high number of them get AIDS, except less accurate. So uh, the, yeah, this yeah. is why oh, when right. you look at. NBC, the parent <laughs> companies, NBC, ABC, CBS, uh, NBC, Vox, right, Universal. Right. Then ABC is Disney. Gosh, we've been in lawsuits with all of these. Places. Yeah, we have. Yeah. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> Every <laughs> single one. You're just naming your lawsuits. My half Go Asian on. lawyer That's is uh, in digital court right now. Yep. They're all trying to squeeze YouTube and Google, right, trying to get them to favor yeah. these shows yep. because I think they, they know that they don't have the stuff to compete. Mm. That's why they want to force shows like this out. Not just shows like this, but there are plenty. Take examples like PewDiePie. Take examples of whoever. Yep, right, just, they just yeah. turn on a camera and start live streaming video games. And I think there's there's a race to the middle, right? There's a split the difference with some pre-produced content, some decent budget, but also, hopefully, talent. Now, <laughs> by the way, hit the notification bell uh, if you are not joining Mug Club. Of course, Mug Club Quarantine is the promo code for the month. Uh, but uh, hit the notification bell. Hit all notifications because subscriptions don't mean a they whole lot. And do subscribe to Crowder Bits because that will be uh, we'll be uploading a lot of content. A lot of extra stuff over there. This right? month. Here's something else that I think it's really showcased. Not only how unfunny they are. I mean, I don't, I don't think we need a coronavirus to pull back I mean, the curtain on yeah, Samantha. Yeah, yeah, it's not a big reveal. <laughs> no, I don't think so. So much. If anything, for hers, it's an improvement. Yeah, it's the best show she's done in a while. Well, because no one's watching is what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Like, it's an improvement because if a horribly unfunny diversity hire screams alone in a forest. So <laughs> as their production value has gone down and they don't respect their audience, we adore you. We genuinely do. We are so grateful. They've also become lazier, and this is a silver lining, in hiding their political bias. So yeah, Kimmel sure. had uh, former presidential candidate uh, Pete Buttigieg on to host his show uh, initially when they were concerned about uh, the Chinese virus. Here you go. Now, this is a strange night for us, not only because this is my first time hosting a talk show, because we are doing it without a regular studio audience. Due to public health concerns over the coronavirus, Few staffers we have canceled and, yeah. the studio do do audience tonight. Hurts. Let's do this together. Who's with me? <laughs> Here's his big joke, watch. Right. Full disclosure, none of those people are here. But when you don't have a real audience, you have to fake one, just like Trump's inauguration. <laughs> big toothy uh, smile. Screw you, Pete. Screw you hard. <laughs> Screw you hard with someone else's pecker is my point. I want nothing <laughs> no, to do no, no, with yeah, you. Right. This is that. Yeah, yeah, not not, not, not anyone weird. here. I have no yeah. idea. It is so bad. But think about this. They're having. Why else? Why would you have Pete Butt gig on? If not for the, they're just trying to push a mm -hmm. political agenda right now. They used yeah. to try and obfuscate a little bit. No, no, no. We're just going for comedy. Really? Okay. So you're a late night show and you're <laughs> just chasing comedy and you thought. <laughs> Subhost Pete Butkin. That is like the, we used to know like stand-up comics in the road yeah. who would have the most horrible opener just to guarantee job security. <laughs> Either yes. that is what's going on, or Jimmy Could Kimmel be. actually thinks Pete Butkin is funny, or he's pushing a political agenda. You decide All. which one is more offensive. None of them are good. <laughs> None of them are good options. And now here, here you go. Here's is this another uh, Kimmel? Yeah, that's right. He's been interviewing yes. people oh, from his yeah. home. Yes. And here you go. He yeah. is again at one point just trying to say, well, it's not about left or right. It's about being a human as he cries about Cecil the Lion. Uh, now he's basically been helping Biden tape awkward campaign commercials. That's what it's become. Here you go. <laughs> Joe Biden. What's that hat you have on? And New York Mets. It's supposed to be opening day. Oh, oh opening no. day. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, oh you know like that, that, that was like the Saw player. character. That's yeah. terrifying. I'll tell you what, but it's a way to be able to sleep with my wife. Whoa! She's a Philly what? girl. Oh, okay. If I oh, work I for the I Phillies, I'd be out Kimmel. of luck, She man. likes the hat. Do you think That's Trump a brand will new debate hat. you, or do you think he will try to dodge that? I don't know. I hope we debate. I'm looking forward to that. I don't think you no, are, Joe. I don't think not. you and not your plucked good. off a Cheshire cat uh, alarm clock mouthpiece <laughs> really want to debate <laughs> Donald Trump. It is remarkable like to cartoon. me. Just By the way, that's what I had if I want to sleep with my wife. A she's a nine-year-old Philly girl. I mean, she's a girl. She's a girl from Philly. What? What happened? Uh, oh, huh? Why'd I stop? 
Um, <laughs> Again. It is remarkable to me that in all this, I mean, what, what, did they have, why don't they have Donald Trump on? Right. They could have had a lot. I don't of care if they're chasing the funny. I don't yeah. care. But listen, can we be honest here? Whether you agree with President Trump or not, by every available metric, it's going to be a funnier show it with is. Donald he's Trump than absolutely. it's going to be with yeah. Joe Biden. Yeah. yeah. If you agree with him or if you don't, he's I way mean, funnier. Than it's anybody. going to be funnier. Well, and I get like these guys are doing something that's a little bit different from what they're used to, right? And basically, they're saying that we're the best, but they have all the budget, they have all the staffers. You take away all of that, and you find out they're not the best. Do they do they need some reps to get there? Because they had, it seems like they have no sense of timing. They have no sense of what's funny and what's not when there's nobody in the room. Like, do you think this will get better if it goes? on or will it just continue to reveal how bad they no are? i don't think it'll get better i think that they they really believe this is sort of a gimmick like ah, it's it's so it, it's right. like they just discovered raw content yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the yeah. podcast is yeah. new to yeah. them like they never yeah. even just watched an old rerun of dick cavett like yeah. this is new like, ah it's raw it's what the people want you have no it's what the people want if it's conversational with someone interesting right this is another problem with every tom dick and harry has a podcast like man we just run the, we just let the mics and we just talk Okay, but there should be a selection process before that. <laughs> like there is, there, there, I don't think that there should be gatekeepers in media because we've mm -hmm. talked about this. Of course, I'd never be able to host any main network. And of course, conservatives just told me for a long time that conservatives don't like comedy. So we started doing this show and thank God we found you yes. and we are supported not by Foreign Caliphate, but you with the mugs. mugs. <laughs> Promo code quarantine, $30 Love off. The mugs. So I don't know. I have no idea how, uh, how if they're able to accurately assess their capabilities right. or if they think this is good. I, 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 I don't know how they could think this is good. I mean, maybe do it once like that. And it's like, okay, it's raw, it's funny, but then get better. And if you don't get better, like you, you've got to go, right. okay, we just can't do this. John yeah. Danaher once said, it's hard to get out of bed at six in the morning when you're sleeping in silk sheets. And I don't think their silk sheets are going with Jimmy Kimmel. It could be rubber sheets. Yeah. I don't know. But I, I, I don't think they have the motivation because okay, they've yeah, been surrounded yeah. by sycophants their whole lives, or at least for the last decade. Yeah, well, yeah, and they all act true. as if it's this clever, interesting take on things, but everybody's doing the same thing. Yeah, right. It's, yeah. it's called all, the internet. Yeah, <laughs> they're all broadcasting from their phones or holding up their laptops right, walking right. around their house. And it and yeah, and so again, they, they act as if this is some discovery that they've made. Right. And something else, too. Let's go to... He's not a late-night host, but you know he wants to be. Oh. Um, oh, is he... Can we... That's right. It's always... Let's, it's like... I feel like a carnival barker guessing someone's weight because it's always different every broadcast. <laughs> with Brian Stelter, here he is having Stephen King on uh, with the Chiron when real life is even scarier than fiction. Ooh. Let's watch this. Whoa. Stephen, thank you for, for being here. I, I wonder what, what you say about... An he looks like an angry denimed lesbian. Something Stephen King. Than, than <laughs> he looks like Stephen King to transitioning to woman. <laughs> well, actually, I did imagine it. Uh, I've heard well, a lot about that's that. That's true. That's true. Jeez. It's three or four weeks. People are saying to me, "We're living in a Stephen King world," and all I can say is, "Boy, I, I wish we weren't." Really? This is a Stephen... Hold on a second. This is a Stephen <laughs> King world and truth is stranger than fiction. We're talking about a virus that is, at this point, at the point of this recording, nowhere near the magnitude of a rough flu season. You had a film with a rapist clown. <laughs> Right. It's true. Yeah. It's and, true. and the stand where 99% of humanity right. died. Right. There are right. like 300 people left. We're yeah. equating that yeah. with the sniffles. Yeah. And the yeah. reason they are is because they want to blame it on Donald Trump. Well, they want to act as though, well, this is actually worse than the stand. This is actually worse than, uh, than it. That's right. That's what it was called. Yeah, yeah. This is worse than it yeah. because... It's Donald Trump's fault. Yeah. No mention of China, by the way. Right. If Stephen King wants to talk about some sinister plot, right, some world order, some yeah. global conspiracy, how about the people who lied about the virus in the first place and killed the guy who tried to blow the whistle? Couldn't that deserve a few pages in there? No. Couldn't you include it in the foreword? <laughs> Stephen King? Somewhere? A little? He writes them as he goes. He, that's right. He writes yeah, them as he goes, yeah, and he doesn't know how they end, which right. is why he's done nothing good outside of the Shawshank Redemption and potentially the Green Mile. Prison, really, is... That's where he yeah, belongs, Stephen King, is prison. <laughs> Send him to prison, and we'll get another good Stephen King hey, novel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not too much to ask. Well, listen, we've no. thrown out rule of law. We've thrown Pretty out much. individual rights and freedoms right now because yep. everyone wants to give it up because of uh, a cough at this point with a mortality rate of under 1%. Yeah. So, you know what? Why don't we just... Why don't we just give... 
give uh, give Stephen King the Dinesh D'Souza treatment. Put him in a federal prison. I mean, yeah. all Dinesh did was give five ten thousand dollars to a friend senatorial or congressional campaign who yeah. didn't even win anyway. Right. Let's just send Stephen King to prison. I bet you he'll right. come up with a Shawshank too, which, by the way, <laughs> may not be as derivative as the original Shawshank as it relates to Escape from Alcatraz. It was the same film. It was better done, but it was the same film. Going through True. the wall, emptying the, the little concrete, the plaster through the hole in the pockets, a white guy and a black guy. It was Escape from Alcatraz. That's what Shawshank Redemption was. Mm. That being said, I liked it. I didn't like it or it too. How long have you been holding on to that? <laughs> I have been holding on to a whole lot, but when I see him looking like an angry lesbian salon artist, yeah. it makes me... It just brings it out of you. And he this is... <laughs> did look partly dead in that scene. I'm sorry. He had that, like, grayed over everything, so... He's he, always well, that way. He just looked yeah. bizarre. He looked like every... I knew... Ang when I would know angry middle-aged French-Canadian lesbians, yeah. they all had that gray hair with kind of the, yeah. the bangs that came over, like, here, like the little cowlick. Oh, yeah. And yeah. it should be noted, too, that he's very feminine. That's true. He's very feminine, true. but in all the bad ways. And he's not voluptuous. <laughs> he's not mysterious. He's not attractive. He's just naggy and curt. <laughs> so let no me, redeeming qualities. And I want to. Who do you think stacks up the best <laughs> out of all these shows? I want you to tune in for a little bit. I'm sorry, just a little bit. Flip through CNN, Fox News, ABC, NBC, CBS, all the late night shows, and tell me who you think is doing the best job adapting right now. And this, this yeah. is important because it's not the strongest animal that survives. It's the animal who can most effectively adapt. Adapt. And we've consistently yeah. tried to do that and be ahead of the curve, not because we're afraid of going away, but because we really do live to serve you guys. We always think, hey, listen, we have been supported from the ground up from yeah. viewers. You have created this show. We weren't thrust upon you by a network who decided to put us in a time slot that people were watching anyway. And so we've had to earn our keep. We've had to earn your viewership. These people don't. Now you see how lazy they are. And that's why, of course, we're offering uh, this month, the whole month, it's free mug club month, hashtag uh, Mug Club Quarantine. Quarantine. We're doing Monday through Thursday evening yeah. shows available on YouTube in front of the paywall. We're adding three shows a week. You can go to slash schedule every uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah. The Boom. whole month of April, 10 a.m. Eastern. Bunch and uh, Crowder Bits, uh, Apple. And we are trying to give you as much content as possible. And I appreciate a lot of you saying, you know, look out for your health. I am looking, I'm treating it like two a days. I am sleeping right. I am eating right. There and I'm go. very, very unhappy. But as long <laughs> as I Just am like serving two you, two yes. because all you have. This is the reason we're doing this is because I tune, I watch late night religiously. I have to. Yeah. It's not, my, not you fun. don't know how dark it's inside my head sometime, okay? <laughs> and so because of that, I was going, this is all, this is all, you, this is all everyone has out there. We have to give them more. And so it's we're true. going to give you everything we have this month because I know a lot of you are out of work. I know a lot of you run businesses that may not open up again anytime soon. Right. And so if I have to work 12, 14, 16 hour days for a month, you know what? I'll take it if it helps you guys. And then I'll have a long weekend. There it is go. Mug Club Quarantine, promo code quarantine thirty. $30 off. These people are really bad. Let's go to life advice where we can help some other people. Oh, My sure. knee hurts. Please. Tough love! With Guru Crowder. Yes. Mm. I am glad to be with you mm. uh, as I was just before that. Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> glad to be back. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I am not a doctor. No. I will tell you, because screw them. Yes. Honestly, I'm a guru. That being said, if you need a doctor for whatever reason, if you are thinking of anything, uh, is there uh, any kind of help that would require the help of a medical professional? Of course, I am not qualified to dispense that sort of advice or prescriptions. Not mm. stop, so. Stop asking. Yes, I have some. Worry. Yeah, stop yeah. asking. For we can't it's really. Them. I mean, just come. I on. can't get you the uh, the the zannies or the perkies. Oh, yeah. yeah. No one's up the down. Do they do perkies do anymore? Is that I mean, old? It's called perks. 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 Yeah. All right. You I don't have any of the zannies yeah. or perks. Perks. Or, or the ludes. Or any of the, uh, the oxen. <laughs> they don't even make those. I'm kidding. I don't have any oxen. I, oh, I pretty sad. much. I got all these as yokes, far but as no all oxen. of the beasts of burden, <laughs> I am fresh out. Yeah. Hmm. So don't covet. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Dear guru crowd. A lot of the questions. Wow. I do appreciate that someone wrote sincerely mug club member. Thank hey, you. Because no. that's all that you. matters. It's true. Should start making that a I recently had a family event and my mother in law fell and severely hurt herself. Oh, no. <laughs> Was it very funny? Uh, broken. <laughs> we all had the immediate same thought. It's like <laughs> yeah. only oh. if it's funny when it starts broken bone and torn ligaments. But see, that doesn't necessarily negate yeah. the funniness. Well, those Someone can mutually be exclusive hurt there. and you only see it afterwards. It's true. This happened to my mom. Really? Well, she 
at my house and was broke it funny herself. when it happened? Well, yeah, she it? we were not laughing. Okay, <laughs> she did afterwards though. She did afterwards, and then realized she broke her knee. Oh, oh. whoops! Is she okay? Yeah, oh. she had surgery. What kind of surgery did she have? I don't know. There's something. It was like a knee surgery. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he wins. She had a, she had a lobotomy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Exactly. Hey, mom, what kind of surgery do you have? She just turns around. She has an ear in her nose. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Oh gosh, go back. <laughs> Control Z. All right. <laughs> she told everyone <laughs> that she fell while leaning to pick up my child, knocking my child oh, over no. in the process. Huh. Um, however, another relative from my side of the family witnessed her fall and said she was holding my child, who was 11 months old. My mother-in-law is 300 pounds and is not allowed to watch my children. After two years of safety issues, poor discipline, and a general disrespect for my husband mm. and me as parents, my relative okay. does not know any of this and has no reason to lie. She brought me my crying child and did say that my mother-in-law fell on my child immediately after the incident. I am unsure if there was another witness to the incident and do not want to bring this to everyone's attention because I have not told my husband. Do I bring this to his attention or just let it go? Her holding my child explains how she injured herself so badly. Mm. But do I gain anything by bringing this to light, or will it just upset my husband? Keep in mind, she guilt trips him all the time about not being allowed to watch her kids, blames the decision entirely on me. We made the decision together and held off because she, we knew the blowout would be enormous. Did not take any responsibility for her behavior and decisions. She has literally said, I don't know why she doesn't want me to watch them and has yet to address any of her grievances with me. This incident does not help her cause. Okay. Wow. So it sounds to me like it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, the bottom yeah. line here. So, um, there was humor. I will say that this one is is uh, I, it's not easy to execute. Kill it's not easy to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy to live out, but it's an easy solution. Uh, Kids come first. Yeah, yeah. Kids come first, and uh, negligence can still be uh, abuse. Yeah. In this Absolutely. case, or even neglect, let's take another step further, can be abuse. Uh, ignorance can be a form of abuse. And even, so intent doesn't really matter here if your mother is a danger to people. Yeah. And I would just explain that to her if she's a danger to people. In mother-in-law. Other words, mother in law. Mother in law, yeah. sorry. I would just explain if she's a danger to your children, she can't be uh, around your children. Or, you know what? Maybe split the difference and she can. Hold your kids if you're supervising, because that is something important to her. She of does want to have, and maybe yeah. if she has a problem with you and your husband, um, she may not have a problem with your kids. And she could be a great grandma. I've known people yeah. like that. So, I safety first. I wouldn't leave her in a room unsupervised with your kids. Just like, by the way, never leave a kid you uh, a kid with a dog you don't know unsupervised in a room. Right. Some Absolutely, people think like, yeah. oh, my kid gets along with my dog. That's true. Yeah. But I see parents do this all the time. Some people do it too. They've done it with with Betty. They did it with Hopper. Thank God. That yeah. obviously mm -hmm. they're fine. But that being said, I would sit there yeah. and be like, I cannot imagine this. I no. cannot imagine being a parent and leaving my child with a yeah. dog that I don't know that well, no. especially a dog the size of, of Hopper or Betty. So I'm consistently amazed sometimes at some of the decisions that, that parents make um, that my parents were very clear on. Like my, yeah. I always knew that my right. safety came first. Yeah. That's what comes first with your mother-in-law. So I don't know. Yeah. It's going to be hard. Yeah. She's not going to like it, but I would be as straightforward as possible. You absolutely have to bring. Am I out of line? You absolutely have to bring this to your husband's attention because for your sure. mom fell oh, yeah. on your kid. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's a it's a tricky situation in the execution of making sure. I know. I said of it the again. mom. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> of, of making sure that this this takes place. So it, the the answer is absolutely true. You you have to take the kid safety first. But then the next part comes. If she's blaming you for this. That means your husband has got to do a better job of communicating with his mom. This is not my wife being mean or cruel. This is us saying yeah. that this is a dangerous situation. Mom, your son, me, I am saying, I don't want you watching our kids by yourself because mm -hmm. we love you. We want you to be around the kids, but these are unsafe situations. And unless we can mitigate those, we can't do this. There has to be a very adult conversation. He seems like he needs to step in the way a little more and make sure that she's not being blamed. Like, well, that evil wife of yours is just yeah. not wanting me to see the kids. That's what it feels like from what she said. Yeah. So I think he needs to do a better job of getting in the way of that. I also, this is just a, a personal belief. I think that a lot of folks and family see it as just sort of a rite of passage. Like, well, I'm a grandparent now, therefore I get to do 
X, Y, Z. Whatever I want. Right, yeah. no, whatever I want. No, you yeah. don't. <laughs> you don't. You right. still need to be looking out for the safety of the child, and the parents still have yeah. the right to make those calls for the same reason. If, if you're a heroin addict and you're a grandparent, you don't get to be right. in the children's life. Sometimes the parents have different standards than you do. Sometimes the parents want to raise your children differently than you do. That is their, whether it's right or wrong, and in this case, I'm not saying that the parents are wrong, but sometimes they can be wrong. Yeah. That still is their right, and it you is. have to make do as a grandparent. Or give up being with the grandkids. Right. You know, you got choices there. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes people just think, well, I'm a grandparent, therefore, no, kids should yeah. obviously respect all of their elders, including yeah. the grandparents. It's not the child's job to keep you in line at all. Okay, let's be clear about that. But it is True. the parent's job to set boundaries and let you know what is and what is not okay. And um, in this scenario, um, not knowing all of the history, I mean, this is a physical danger to your child. Yeah, 300 plus pounds yeah. and, and having issues with falling. This isn't the first time and all that. I, just, I wouldn't do it. Now, that, that being said, you also have to be too. objective. If yeah. this is a 300 pound woman who wants to hold your baby while she's sitting and you're in the room, if you're not comfortable with it, that's no longer a safety issue because she's, if she's sitting, she has good base. Okay? She's not. She's. <laughs> The place that's is no three, longer three a physical contact, danger. At least. So you need <laughs> so you need to be consistent. You need to be consistent how you communicate. In other words, you can't say like, well, oh, it's a safety issue. She goes, Well, fine, I'll sit down and I'll put the baby in a brace. And you're like, Well, no, she's yeah. like, Well, she's gonna try and corner you. Right. Say what you mean and be consistent. Decide what the rules are, draw the boundaries, and make sure you stick with them. But being less than straightforward isn't going to help because it's just right. going to create more right. miscommunication in the line. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Next one, here we go. Dear Guru Crowder, Audio Wade, Gerald, and Quarter Black. Hey. In parentheses, though. Like, I mean, I'm not Ooh. even sure what, what that, that mean? means. I don't, I don't, what you I don't know. know. I know exactly what it means. Um, no, I don't. It uh, might as so well be a I less keep than going. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that. I don't know what that is, sir. Uh, I lost my dad at a fairly young age. I was 20. My dad was 50. Talking to him has always given me peace. Um, is that a bad thing? To him is in quotes. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, he is the best friend I ever had. Is there a chance you all can really expand on the spiritual aspect of things? Uh, my father was cremated, unfortunately. That's a totally different family issue. But his ashes stay on my nightstand. I am nearing 30, have three children, and nobody seems to be able to accept, acknowledge, or be able to help me move on during my darkest days. I often yeah. feel like I'm dying without him uh, to be with him. Uh, Yes, give Betty cheese, please. Oh, well, that that happens. Betty that doesn't love the cheese happens. as much as Hopper. Um, and, and she's also learned a lot. Thank us, you very much. Um, I think as well. Uh, so anyway, that's tough when you lose a parent. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry to hear yeah, that. That's yeah, really absolutely. It's a really difficult um, process. I, I think you know. I think it's been almost a decade since that, based on some of the stuff that I saw in the letter that I didn't read. I think it's almost about a, a decade uh, since that happened. I don't know that you ever fully recover, but you obviously move closer and closer to getting some kind of normal, maybe a little bit of a new normal. Um, as far as talking to your dad um, as though he's still present and in the room, there are a lot of times where I, I think that can be very helpful to – to, to think like that. Um, but then I also think that there are some times where that can be somewhat detrimental. It keeps you focused on maybe the past a little bit more and not really living in the present and being as present of a, a, a parent. You have three children, uh, right? To be, you are that person to them only in the, the yeah. mother role. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think sometimes it can be a little bit detrimental to hang on to those things. There's a period of mourning that we have to go through and a period at which we kind of have to move on. And that's where you get a lot of that healing from when you move on into the normal things of life without forgetting the past and without rejecting it, but putting it in its proper place and saying, I'm, I'm honoring the memory of this person. I remember them fondly. I think about them. And when I do, it's good memories. But I'm also sowing into the now. I'm sowing into my children and the situations that I'm in and the friendships that I have. So if it ever gets in the way of that and keeps you from moving on, um, especially you said you have some really, really dark times, um, I, I think it would be helpful to continue through the rest of the process and not stay where you are in the process. But that's just yeah. my take on it. Um, well, it depends. What it, talking to him as though he's still. He, I mean, you're, I want to be clear as far as the spiritual side to expand. Your 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 dad can't hear you. Right. I don't know if anyone here disagrees with me on that uh, spiritually. I, I don't. What do you think, Wade? I don't. I don't think he's busy listening to every word you're saying. No. I yeah. 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 I, yeah. I don't know that there's any scripture that tells me that that people that we are family members with can hear and see what's going on in our life. Right, I don't believe right. that that's true. 
Um, and there's a lot. That but I had to think say, about it for a second. There's just a lot to make that would sure. say otherwise. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know they can't come back like in a spiritual way. You can't call them back. You can't communicate with the dead or anything like that. Well, that's as far I'm, as like what kind of view you have from the mezzanine up there on what's going on down here, I have no idea. But I'm assuming it's not that your focus is on earth. You're you're in heaven. Yeah. That's right, a great yeah. focus to have up there. I don't. Yeah. I, as far as from a spiritual basis, I see a lot to to uh, not only suggest but flat out tell you as a Christian uh, that you cannot communicate with anyone who is no. dead. Period. Um, and a matter of fact, I see a lot of prescriptions that are pretty clear. Don't do that. Right. Yeah. It doesn't say don't do that yeah. except for a dead relative. It says no. Don't do that. Period. Yeah. yeah uh, period. Don't do that. And here's what I will say, though. A lot of people say that. I'm like, oh man, and it hurts them. Let me let me be really clear. Do you really think? And this is I will. I understand where you're coming from to a degree. I, have, I still have both my parents, but I watched my mom lose both of her parents uh, in the span of a year. Um, and I was very close. So to keep, give you an idea, actually, I grew up so close to my grandfather. It's actually not as far from the f- back of this building to the front of this building right here where I grew up from my grandfather. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so I stayed there all the time. I was with my grandfather. He was. When people say a second father, I don't think there would have been more than two days that went by that I didn't see my grandfather for yeah. significant uh, amounts of time every day. He was my favorite person. So not the same thing. That being said, um, I do think there's a component of this. Listen, you have children. You want them to feel this uh, longingly about you when you go away. You need to focus on your children. You need to move on for your children. You need to move on for your husband. You need to move on for your family. And when you remove the, and I say this respectfully, the selfish part of the equation, it's a good thing that your dad can't hear you, sweetheart. I mean that. It's, it's a good thing. You don't want your dad looking down right now and seeing you in this much pain. What could possibly yeah. be more torturous for your dead father than looking down and seeing you miserable, unable to do anything because he can't communicate with you? Right. It may make you feel better, but that would be horrible. That would be like ripping the heart out of your dad's chest. So thank Christ, and I mean thank Christ. Christ in that he is very clear that you cannot communicate to the dead and that when you get to heaven, you are not longing for anything of this world. And here's the thing. That's a good thing because that's a good thing that that's the case because guess what? As soon as your dad crossed over through those pearly gates, whether figurative or literal, um, if he were to long for anything of this world, it would be you because I'm sure that he loved you just like you love him, but he doesn't. Right now he is completely fulfilled and at peace, which I know is much harder for you, but it's not hard for your dad. Yeah. So spiritually, mm-hmm. your dad can't hear you. Your dad is not, and, and thank God, your dad is not uh, having all of this sort of offloaded onto him, all of your emotions, because you're still dealing with with the fleshly pain and the, the earthly concerns and desires and turmoil that really he's long since left behind something else too. There's a strong case to be made, and I had a pastor talk about this. I don't have the verses in front of me. In heaven, there isn't the same concept of time that we have here. Correct. So as far as yeah. so as far as your dad is concerned, you're walking through those gates at the same time. Yeah, together. Yeah. So yeah, it's a very um, strong case. Yeah. That. On a spiritual basis, I, I feel it's one of those things where people listen, I hate I know I'm gonna sound like a hippie, but open your mind. They, they go, But wouldn't my dad like I love my dad so much, wouldn't God want me to be able to talk to my dead uh, dead grandfather, my dead father. Well, hold on a second. You're trying to put this in a three-dimensional realm where we have a God who is past, present, future, alpha, and omega. You don't understand what heaven is. You don't know how many dimensions there are. And you are trying to put this into a box that would be most pleasant for you. Now there are right. new boxes that you could have never even imagined before. I guarantee you that he is better off than you could ever possibly compute and that doesn't include in the equation, as far as what we believe biblically, the ability to communicate with you. It's yeah. not a part of the equation. The equation is far better than you're giving it credit for. Yeah. So this is a lot more difficult for you than it is for him. And so I think the best thing that you can do is, like you said, take the proper steps to moving on and, and um, start focusing on, on other people first. It sounds to me like you're, um, it sounds to me like you're a great mom, that you care about your kids, that it sounds to me like you have a great family. I mean, I would imagine that uh, if your dad were, were here, that would be really important for him, for, for you to continue um, continue with that, not reaching yeah. out to him. He can't hear you. Yeah. Well, and I think, too, you know, uh, your dad would probably want that for you. Yeah. Right? Whenever, whenever your parents leave this earth, they want you to be able to function and to have a wonderful, joy-filled life with your family or whatever the situation may be with you. And so... 
use that as motivation. Like, well, what would my dad want me to do right now? Would he want me to be thinking about the past and living in pain from this situation? Or would right. he want me to remember the good things about the time that we had together and move forward and take some of the lessons that I learned and create a legacy that reflects on him as well as me? Yeah. You know, like, I, I think you're right. And that's it's super hard. You know, I mean, in those types of situations, especially at a, at a young age that this person lost, I'm not super young, but young enough. Yeah. Um, pretty, pretty early. Uh, it's just it's tough but the best thing that you can do is to understand like that's what that's the goal the goal of being a parent is to raise a child that can live on their own and have a good life hopefully a life that is better than yours yeah. that's what your dad would want you to do and this is one thing I will say that and I, I mean, this is just me going off my own personal rant so I appreciate you sending the email this doesn't necessarily have to do with you but it kind of is a narcissistic view mm-hmm. of heaven when people say like oh, oh I know my I know my uh, dad or I know my aunt or I know my Uncle. son is yeah. smiling down on me that's a pretty crappy heaven especially considering <laughs> <laughs> that this is supposed to be very temporary, by right. the way. This is this is but a moment when you think yeah. about eternity. This is this is very much second tier to what goes on there as far as your lifespan, yeah. as far as all of eternity, right? So we're gonna be designing from the ground up for heaven to be right. Here, right now, this is fall, and people have made all kinds of mistakes, and obviously we understand what the end of the world will, well, we don't understand fully what the end of the world will look like, but we understand there will be an end of the world, and there will be a final day of judgment. But the point is, yeah. to think that heaven was created for this very temporary space known as earth for people just to sit there and be like, what's going on down there? Yeah, like an they aquarium. Don't, they don't care. Yeah. yeah. If anything, you, we can't, but we should be concerned with what's going on up there a whole lot more than they could care about what's going on down here. Yeah. Yeah. It would, it would be very bad to have a view from heaven to see all the pain on earth. Yeah. You That's know. like thinking the headliner should be watching every single warm up act. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's exactly, the back, it's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is this me? Okay. All right. But, and I'm sorry to hear of, of your loss. Yeah. And I think yeah. that, uh, listen, I think, uh, you know, we only see a snapshot into people's lives here. So sometimes True. we can either right. say yeah. that we're being sometimes blunt or being harsh or we're not. From what I read, it seems like you you probably are a fantastic mother. And I think that, um, that focusing on that. And, and also, by the way, I would also test us on this. Read up on theology. Read, see if you believe, if you can find any justification, look to the scripture that, um, that your father is able to communicate with you. And if you think that we're wrong, then let me know why. But speak with you know, spiritual advisors, people yeah. whose spiritual counsel you trust, and go to the book. And uh, I, think, um, I think you'll find more peace once you actually get definitive answers. Yeah. Uh, okay, dear, amazing, all-knowing Guru Crowder and Gerald C. Oh, not even me. It's true. Well, you know. <sighs> That work gun. work on yep. your lamp, right? you know how I feel. <laughs> My wife's there. grandfather Sixth. passed away three weeks ago, and we haven't had sex since. Oh. There's Whoa. a loaded freight. Holy. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Who's Death we? and <laughs> sex. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's Who like is we? Necrophilia. This is like Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, my wife's grandfather passed away three weeks ago, and we haven't... I assume you mean you and your wife. Right. My wife's grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like my grandfather doing a crossroad right, puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> Your wife's grandfather. Garrett's died. Who was the Lone Ranger's horse? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I'm trying to right. figure out the genealogy here. Okay. Keeping it simple, how long should I expect to wait before asking or bringing it up <laughs> and seeming like an inconsiderate a hole? Too late. I understand the grieving process is different for every situation, but I also don't want it affecting our marriage. Or should I just Three continue weeks? to go take care of business myself and <laughs> wait? Yeah, it's, it's been three weeks. Heard of you ready? You yeah. can hold it. Um, okay. Thanks. One frustrated. Let me let me just tell you that you, you are an inconsiderate ass. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, dude. A little bit. Just a wee bit. <laughs> <laughs> this is tough love. This is not easy yeah. love. Yes. If you want easy love, that's a different show. <laughs> I understand that and you have needs, <laughs> Jeez. but I don't care that much. And that yes. being said, if you go take care of it of yourself, which one would presume there's probably some level of that, I don't think your wife would hold it against you uh, rather than uh, rubbing up against her leg. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, Jeez, man. All right, so let's talk about needs. Seriously, right? So he, he says in his letter he has a higher sex drive and that this is a thing that they uh, have to work on. Okay, so you have a need right now. You have a need to be intimate with your wife. Your and, wife in has other words, a need. This is a pre-existing condition. Issue. Oh, yes, yes, it is. They yes. already knew about this. This is not. Yeah, I'm going to say what Milton Berle told a young Richard Pryor: "Pick your spots, babe." <laughs> <laughs> she has a need right now as well. She has a need for you to be there to be with her for. And it's Whatever not the dick. process. It's not, yes. <laughs> it's, yeah. She it doesn't is. need the D. She doesn't need your 27 second rodeo, okay? She's not looking for that right now. What she's looking for is her husband to be there and to, to say, look, I know that this goes beyond that. Now, at a certain point, 
you guys do need to come together, right? Because it is good for a relationship not to be apart. Like the Bible says, like, okay, right. don't, don't you know, depart for a time, but not for too long mm-hmm. because that's, that's a problem sometimes. Yeah. Uh, because eventually this guy could go to pornography and we've talked about that in previous things. Right. Um, so anyway, I, I do think you need to, uh, don't be selfish when it comes to sex. I know three weeks sounds like a long time, especially for somebody in y'all's age bracket that you listed, but understand that she's going through something difficult. Don't be selfish when it comes to sex and uh, I would also this women understand that you bear part of the responsibility as well. Yeah, you cannot if this is a pre existing issue. Obviously, this, these are uh, extreme circumstances where you had a death in a family. But I see a lot of women who think, well, especially and I hate to say, say this, but especially in the church with conservative women like, well, he should be able to control himself. You, you're playing with fire. If yeah. you just because you don't have a sex drive, you're not having sex with your husband, you know, going yeah. weeks without it. Yeah. You are playing with fire and that you are deciding to try and use whether knowingly or unknowingly a biological function of a man. And by the way, this is something, this is also something how married couples become closer. Don't do it. I'm not yeah. absolving women of responsibility because no. obviously the man should have some self-control. Yeah. But if you do not have sex with your husband repeatedly, like, well, he should learn. Yeah. Listen, I don't know what you expect to happen. Yeah. 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 Well, Scripture my, says not yeah. to give place to the devil, I believe. Uh, yeah, my, my first temptation. question yeah. is, has he tried? <laughs> Like you mean rubbing up against her leg repeatedly? Three weeks, three weeks and they're <laughs> like, not hey, like baby, kissing, you know. or they're not like there's no. Contact I will say three weeks seems like a long time. It does sure, seem like yeah, a long time. Yeah, but it, it seems like it w- he would at least like make know. an advance. And does she just go no? What well, like, could also be he's up? intimidated because of the pre-existing, Maybe. you know, yeah. problem. Sure, I have yeah. no idea. It's been three weeks since like you can well, talk well, about it was too. It their parent that died? No, grandparent. Grandparent. Okay, well. Maybe three I think you talk about. It. Yeah, it's pretty weird. I, well, here, look. I think you talk about it. I think you you say, "Hey, like this is this is an issue right now that we need to talk about." Ken, I understand you're in a grieving period. Can we talk about? Yeah, when? talk. It takes yeah. some of the well, romance. It sounds, out like, it, it sounds it. to me like but this might be an issue more so with you because this is something that's been going on for a while. Yeah. yeah. Because if three weeks was right. like was atypical, you'd say, "Well, this is for a season." I understand that she's really upset. Right. But it sounds to me like you're thinking that maybe your wife. Sorry, I have the hiccups. Yeah, you guys here. have kids. That's normal. Yeah. Well, <laughs> three weeks. Kids, stop it! I don't know. Stop I don't know it! Happened with my, Kids. my 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 parents. I don't know. <laughs> They've said so. Yeah, they've been very clear about it. But that, I, so I don't know. I don't they, know. They keep talking about it. It's weird. I'm in that second <laughs> trimester amazingness. <laughs> I think it's just a warning <laughs> shot over the bow. That's true. That does happen. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you need to. In other words, if there's a mismatch here as far as your sexual expectations, and you feel that maybe she's using this as an excuse, then that's an entirely different problem. That's a right. communication true, yeah. problem. It's true, and it is. And this is a problem that this is something that's very politically incorrect. It does go both ways. Men, you need to control yourself. If we're going to talk about pornography, women, it is a part of your wifely obligations. What do I mean by obligations? It's a part of your wifely duties to satisfy your husband sexually if you plan on having a successful marriage. That does yeah, not mean no, no. if you are, you know, you're holding your C-section scar and all right, that's not what I'm saying. Ow. If you have an yeah. inconsiderate husband, right. that's not a problem. Time. But that being said, if you are looking for an excuse to not engage your husband in sexual activity, you are making a mistake. Yes. So I have a question for you guys. The guy, everybody's married in this room, obviously. So yeah. um, obviously. we read a book. Sorry, I almost said that y'all <laughs> weren't. I almost was like, uh, for, uh, for those of you who are married, sorry, I used to be the guy not Cool your married. jets. You're a little new to the club. <laughs> exactly. I know, right? I know everything, guys. Listen up. Uh, no, we read a book that said something that we both thought was pretty interesting, uh, where a couple, and it's a Christian-based book, and it said, look, if I go to my wife, and for some, for whatever reason, right, she's like, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm super tired, or just... It's, yeah, I'm not yeah. going to be able to because of, you know, whatever. I'm in my head. doesn't matter. Whatever it is, they have a 24-hour rule where they know that, okay, within 24 hours, Surprise they will come time. back. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but they, they've, agreed to, they've agreed for each other to say, look, this is an important enough part of our relationship where it's sacrificing one for the other. And so yeah. I understand that right now is a no, and that's totally fine. You have to yeah. have the ability to say that. But within 24 hours, unless the the party that has approached says, you know what, look, I know we need a little bit more time. Well, no, you don't. That's necrophilia then after that. That's that's, that's no fun for anybody, Stephen. Come on. (laughs) So anyway, no, that's I thought that was a really good rule. It may be helpful for he him to have some kind of rule like this. So (laughs) Um, that's a good rule. I I will say this. I will say this. My wife and I have um, often, and I don't don't mean to say, but mismatched energies as far as a lot of things. In other words, when I get home from Mm -hmm. work, I've been working for so long that typically my wife wants to talk about her day. I'm like, I don't want to talk. So I just, <laughs> yeah. often I'm like, so we have to kind of set some rules. Like, okay, I get home. You give me at least 10 minutes when I get to the door. Press, yeah. And obviously, you know, for me, like I often work from home. If I leave True, here, yeah. I'm like, I go home, I check our messages. Okay. What right. do we need to do as far as titling? So I'll kind of yeah. try and wrap some things up. And then after that is like 10 minutes for me to 
do some, what do I do to relax? Typically speaking, I'm a very simple man, either Cigar. reading or watching, yeah, cigars or watching old, uh, like right now I've been watching a lot of old boxing videos. I kind of oh, go through right, phases yeah. where I'll read old sort of like docu, I'll, I'll, I'll read some old books or how to's or watch some old yeah. documentaries. Right now it's old boxing videos like this. You know? cool. I've been going through the Duran, um, Hagler, Hearns, watching every fight, watching every analysis I can find on the fights and then reading up on them. And it's just very interesting to sort of understand this. I, I enjoy snippets of history and sort of immersing myself into that world. Anyway, but we have sometimes mismatched energies after work where I don't necessarily want to talk. And sometimes that is sexually. I will say this, the worst time, I've talked about this on the show, the worst time for sex to me is later in the day. Yeah, That's when I'm just swamped. Like I wish it was like an after, like the afternoon snack time. Afternoon That's delight. The, that would be the perfect time for it's me. Like for kindergarten. Sex. I think, by the way, this is something full sex disclosure. Sex in a nap. Yeah. Yeah. Does <laughs> anyone else have difficulty with wake up sex, like right in the morning? What you, difficulty you mean? Like oh, it's yeah. difficult. To do? It's, it's far more difficult, difficult to, to get happen. into it to no. make it happen. No. Immediately upon waking. Well, I, hold on. Do you mean like a willing having a willing partner as well? No, no, no. I mean Just for me. So you're, okay, yeah, no. When I, I write, when I wake up, I'm like, I need coffee. No, no, no. I'm not that way at all. No, okay. yeah. I wake no, up immediately and a lot of times no. I'm like, okay, hey, I, I can do this. this. I can for make me, this there's like a window kind of ready to go which is after the gym in the morning <laughs> and before the end of the workday, which makes it very difficult. It does. <laughs> so we know. schedule so that we every coping. day. We, do, we have coping mechanisms. Oh, okay. <laughs> but that can. But you do have to sit down and talk about this. You do. And it is a problem that every married couple needs to work out. And a lot of yeah. people get uncomfortable with it or they think, well, I don't want to schedule sex. Sometimes you, you have to, to because Sometimes, we yeah. live. It helps you get in a rhythm. Honestly, like it yeah, helps you helps. understand the other person and then you get in that rhythm with them. And the rhythm is going to get you. <laughs> it's going to get you there. I've, I've heard, heard that. Yeah. <laughs> you can handle my rhythm. Um, <laughs> I have heard that. You're right. <laughs> Did you see that? Repeatedly. Was George, that was George St. Pierre. It was one uh, of his quotes. He said he that? Like, yeah, he walked up and he's like, uh, I don't think Matthews can handle my rhythm. Oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, the original memes were, the rhythm's going to get you. <laughs> and someone actually did a Gloria Estefan uh, re, uh, redux, but it was, yeah. like, oh, man. the rhythm's going to get you. Oh, the no. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the buy it with your money. Uh, the <laughs> energy drink that he did or with whatever. Your with your money. your yeah. money. <laughs> George St. Pierre. What a great athlete. All right. right. So I don't know if we answered your question. I don't really care. <laughs> we tried. Oops. Don't try and mount your wife immediately yeah, upon her relative's right? Yeah. yeah. On the flip side, if it's three weeks have gone by and you're not putting yeah. out, come on, sweetheart. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wedding Crashers said that you could do the it. same thing for funeral, you know, like the emotional state. Yeah. It's what the movie said. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And it's movies prescriptive. Are <laughs> I'm white. That's what you start with. Uh, wow. Okay. It's a lot okay. of problems. No dear guru. Already off the top. <laughs> yeah. Maybe she should I'm have started white. off with Sig Hale. Done. Whoa. <laughs> I have a yeah. You should get. You know what? You should check your insurance for all that sig hail damage. Jeez. I am white. I have a baby um, mama who's half black and who and a wife who's from Africa. Well, okay. that's nice. Hey. Mama is a nightmare, and my wife is an absolutely incredible woman inside and out. Whoa. Ooh. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> well. <laughs> okay. He's a surgeon. <laughs> all right. She even lets me live in the house. Huh? Okay, I think that's a joke. Um, Baby mama, or BM, as I like to silently call her to myself, really? accuses me of being racist and buying a slave wife who I can own. I feel like maybe I'm not the racist one here, but I keep getting told that I'm wrong about that. And yes, BM is voting for Bernie. I could really oh. use your sarcasm to help clear this one up for me. Thank you so much. First off, I don't really use sarcasm. Sarcasm is the lazy man's comedy. It's true. Um, it's true. That being said, sarcasm isn't going to help clear this up, and what I'm about to offer isn't gonna help clear this up. So, <laughs> really, you should, just, you should just close this window, this tab, right now. Right now. Yes. Um, Bye. Move on. I'm trying to make sense of this. So, you have a baby mama who's half black and a wife who's from okay. Africa. Well, Africa is a very large continent. Yeah, it is. What are we South talking? African. Are we talking, did I just see a light reflect on here? I don't think so. Okay. Stuff? Are we talking Scarlett Johansson? Not Scarlett Johansson, what's her name? Uh, Charlie Theron. Charlie Theron, yeah, that's right. Um, I mean, you could be getting away with some wordplay here. A little bit. Where it's a white South I, African and the other one is half black and you're trying to virtue signal like you're not racist, but really I mean, only a white South African. If she's tribal, though, I mean, this is a different story. <laughs> could be. Um, I mean, let's assume that you've plucked your current wife straight off the cover of a National Geographic. <laughs> yeah. His World Vision kit. <laughs> <laughs> African Let's brides. assume that you are supporting your current wife yeah. at the price of less than a cup of coffee per day. <laughs> and that's great. <laughs> Fantastic. Who yeah. knew? 
Um, and then your other baby mama is half black. Uh, I don't really think it should matter. I mean, I don't know what you really. Who cares? Yeah, you're racist. I well, know no, I mean, he's, he, he's being accused of being a racist and owning a quote unquote slave wife. So that makes me think the, the Africa half, wife the is wife. black. Right. Otherwise, it wouldn't make a whole lot no, of sense. No, I know. I was just being difficult. Um, yeah. um, oh, I was trying to clarify. I mean, I understand the only th Here's what matters. What matters is the child in that case, right? Because you're saying baby mama, so you have a child with this woman. So what matters right. is um, what's best for that child. And yep. what's best is for you and the mother to be civil to the best of your abilities. Now, that being said, if you, if you can't be civil without completely abandoning all of your principles or everything that you stand for, that's not best for the child either because they're just going to see a weak-willed father who doesn't stand up for what's right. So it's not really that hard of a balancing act. You need to be respectful and honoring of the BM, as you call it. Let's probably stop with that, uh, that uh, abbreviation there. He said silent in his head, in his which head. I'm cool with. Okay. Nah, that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, unless your kid has ESP, in which case, that's, you know yeah, what, none yeah, of this applies to you. All bets are of off. Problems, yeah. Yeah. Um, honor the mother, respect the mother, make sure that you don't talk badly about the mother to your child, and make sure that your child sees an example of a good, strong father. Your, your, your child is going to be smart enough to see if you are a racist or not. Okay, so how about this? I know what you just said. The BM is voting for Bernie Sanders. Yeah. Make fun of Bernie Sanders and make sure the child knows that the BM is voting for Bernie Sanders. Is that okay? That is underhanded, conniving, and I endorse. <laughs> <laughs> because you're endorse. honoring the mom. Like, you've never said a bad word. You've only said bad things okay. about the candidate she chooses yeah, to ooh, think is mm. Do you want, okay, do you viable. want me to give you the answer here? That is, there's the right thing <laughs> to do. Give us the real thing. There's Come on. the right thing to do, which I've just clarified. The give fun thing. Give love. us the fun now, thing. I've often thought about this. If I wanted to, if I, did, if I just threw caution to the wind, I couldn't care less about the right thing. <laughs> The most effective thing to do. That's what I want. Yeah. Would be to simply uh, comment on Bernie Sanders in a very reasonable but clearly loaded way that, it, <laughs> that might uh, go over a child's head but be caught perfectly in the catcher's mitt by your baby mama <laughs> and watch her flip out uh -huh. and then to your daughter's... Yeah. Just, wow. You see? What's Mom's going on? It's not crazy. the right thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> but it would work. He needed a little sarcasm. We gave him comedy. Mm. Yeah, I don't I mean honestly this is a tough situation. This it is a really is. tough situation. But doing the right thing is still doing the right thing. Honor yeah, the mom, yeah. make sure the kid honors the mom. Make sure the kid sees you ensuring that the ensuring that the mother is respected by the child. Make yes. sure that there's never any doubt in the child's mind that if a if there's a difference of opinion between the child or mom that you will take the side of mom regardless of the new wife. Um, Unless it's Bernie. And I would imagine too, yeah, and I would imagine you want your, you want your baby or baby mama, you're sorry, I'm getting, you want your child to have a good relationship with your current wife. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think will be most effective and what do you think is the right thing to do to make sure that your baby, your child wants to spend more time with you and your current wife? And I would behave that way. There you go. Yeah. I think it's easy enough. Yeah. I mean, we solved all these problems. That's, that's pretty nice. And you know, uh, when the child walks in, just play some of our videos on yep. Bernie Sanders. Let him play in the yeah. background. A we'll, mug we'll club subscription. A uh, mug club subscription. Get him a mug club. I exactly. mean, I think it's a him. I don't know if I... I'm I don't also know. very self-serving. Yeah. Maybe two mug club <laughs> subscriptions. Maybe two. Yeah. <laughs> There's no added value in this scenario Why unless you're there? playing them one with a slight delay. There you go. So that they're sort of talking Kids are always over each on other tablets. like you have a phone on Sprint. Just have the videos at the ready when the BM comes to pick up the child. Yeah, I, but I mean, you know, the one thing is you hear all these horror stories about step parents. Yeah, and it's like you don't want to be that person. And no, a child not just at all. a child doesn't necessarily know. They don't know anything about politics, and they don't yeah. necessarily know what's right. But they know how they feel. Yeah. yeah, and so do what's right and make sure that you find a way to um, to frame doing what's right that feels as attractive as magnetic to your child as possible. You yeah. want to be someone your child yeah. wants to be around, uh, especially as they go into their teenage years. And they just yeah. happen to drop in, you know, socialism doesn't work every once in a while. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Just teach exactly. them right. And anybody who thinks it does is usually a pretty stupid person, except well, yeah. for, this except also for may be, BM. Some people just get This also may be a good spot, you know, if your wife, for example, if your current wife who's from Africa, I don't know her political leanings, but um, and I also don't know that this person specified if their child is a boy or a girl. I, I didn't see it. Mm. So I said boy a minute ago. I okay, don't know. but if the child is a girl, you know, this would be a good thing for your wife to really become friends with. And your wife, by the yeah. way, is not burdened with all the same responsibilities of being the mother because your your, your child has a biological mother. Yeah. So this is a scenario where your wife can kind of be a friend. Right, parents don't get to be buddies, but your wife kind of does. So your wife can be friends, of course, while obviously still having a respectful relationship and respect right. for authority, but your wife can be friends with this child and can also express 
what she was raised with in Africa and the corruption mm. with those systems yeah. of government speak to it firsthand. So these are conversations that can be had that don't need to feel like loaded sort of political indoctrination. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what my parents did. They didn't indoctrinate me, but they made me think about all these issues. They would ask me, well, yeah. what do you think about that? What do you think about those taxes? What do you think about the health care yeah. that you received? What do you think about abortion? Why? They would ask me those questions. And uh, your wife may be a really valuable, sounds like she's a gem, maybe a really valuable asset here because yeah. she doesn't have the same burdens associated with her as you you do as a biological father. Yeah, exactly. Don't so. use the kid. Make, but I'm yeah. glad that you found the, a great I'm life. I'm glad yeah. that you found a good woman. I'm sorry about the baby mama. You don't sound racist to me. Nope. And uh, good for you taking the tribes ladies from the Hutu Plains. <laughs> nice job. All good right. Enough. Better life. We're going to go, I believe, tomorrow. Tomorrow is either a... I don't know, it's a something or other. It's a, I think it's a scrapyard show with a, maybe a guest. Ooh. I'm not sure. But it's going to be fun. Hey, if you enjoyed this show, uh, subscribe or hit the notification bell. I'm covered... It's cold in here, so I'm covering, I'm covering my nips. Hit all notifications on the notification bell because uh, apparently subscriptions don't mean a whole lot. Look, there are video, what they're playing in boxes. Is that what's happening, Court of Blackyard? There are videos playing in boxes. You should click one of them. Maybe one of them is a mystery box. Could cut glass with these things. <laughs>